Hello, hello. Welcome to The Play That Changed My Life. I'm Patrick White, co-founder of Harbinger Theater, which is bringing you this podcast along with OSM Studios. Uh, I have a couple of great guests here today. Uh, Nick Martiniano. Martiniano. Thank you. Who is uh, appearing in... Uh, Spring Awakening at Playhouse Stage this month, and Jocelyn Khoury, who is appearing in uh, The Humans at Homemade Theater uh, up in Saratoga this month. Hello. 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 Welcome. So, uh, yeah, let's get some theater talk started. Uh, we kicked the ball off uh, pre-microphone, uh, and I'd like to pick up some of the thread of that. Um, Jocelyn, you were talking about um, your work with Black Theater Troupe, who uh, you appeared on stage last fall, or was it two years ago? Yeah, with Knock Me a Kiss. Yeah with uh, Angelique Powell and Aleem and Morgan Hayward. Oh my gosh. Um, and now uh, it, you're working with Remy and uh, you saw or you felt like there was an opportunity to um, create uh, another, to create more opportunities in Capital Region Theater. Uh, um, can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so I am uh, from the Dominican Republic. I was born in the Dominican Republic, and um, the um, I saw that there was uh, an opening, <laughs> a space for Afro-Latino uh, voices to come out. To uh, I saw that there was a, a space for us to kind of show upstate New York um, some of our work. And um, so because my black experience is a little bit different um, than an African-American experience. Sure. Our, our, you know, the language is different. The music is different, you know. And so I thought, why not? I saw this opening, and I've never seen an Afro-Latino play up here at all. So I, um, I spoke to Remy, and I say, hey, how about if we, you know, start showing more for Latino plays here, and I would love to be, you know, spearheading that. And he said, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> and um, you know, so that's where we're heading. Um, Great. Soon, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I I don't know how much of this. Um, uh, are you working with the production coming up in June with the the I kids? Am. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I am. I'm going to be um, working with them, and um, I'm also going to be doing a monologue and uh, appearing um, in one of the short plays as well. Uh, so that's really exciting. I've always, I've worked with kids before, um, uh, but I really love getting to work with them to teach kids that are out there wanting to learn the craft. So I'm really excited to be part of this. Yeah. And this is my first time with, with that. And I'm just ready, ready to go. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I love everything about that. I, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing Afro-Latina theater. Um, you know, I, you mentioned uh, the playwright Alvarez. I don't think I've ever seen a play by Julia yeah, Alvarez. Julia Alvarez. <laughs> Um, it, I can't say the name, <laughs> Yeah. but it's, um, it's just one very close to, very close to home. Um, and, um, can't say much about it. I don't want to, I don't want to oh. the beans. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, I love, uh, season secrets too. <laughs> Um, but great, working with kids, and you mentioned, uh, we'll get to the humans in a minute. Uh, Nick Martiniano, where are you from? Uh, I, I'm originally from the Capital Region, and then, uh, you know, I, I was down in New York City for a while, and then I was in Pennsylvania for a few years, and just came back up here uh, May of 22. Oh, great, uh, right in the middle of it. Uh, as far as the pandemic's concerned. And so uh, you started performing here. I've seen you a couple of times. Uh, you were in Ragtime, 
and you were in something else before that? Yeah, I, I did Something Rotten with Playhouse Stage uh, last summer. Oh, excellent. And then I did uh, Best Christmas Pageant Ever with them right. in uh, December. And then prior to that, the first thing that I did uh, since coming back to the Capital Region was the Guys and Dolls concert with Not So Common Players. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, welcome back to the area. Thank you. So you grew up here. You go to school in New York, or yeah, I went to school at Russell Sage College and was up here for a while before moving down to the city. Great. And you were down the city, uh, playing your wares, trying to make it in the business. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I did a, a few tours. Um, I did one with uh, Stars Within Reach, and then I went out with Theater Works USA and. Uh, it was more of just life things that that led to some changes and stepping sure. away from that as, as the main gig. But it, it's been wonderful to kind of walk back in and and embrace that theatrical side and artistic side. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're getting so many opportunities. That's awesome. It's been wonderful. Yeah, it's a great place to work. <laughs> um, and uh, working with uh, Playhouse Stage, um, y- from something rotten, uh, you had an ensemble which had some academy grads, Playhouse yeah. Academy grads in it. Uh, but uh, now you're working with like the kids in uh, Christmas Pageant and Spring Awakening. How's that been going? It, it's been just wonderful. You know, seeing the way that the creative team there just embraces arts education. You know, these kids are walking in and, and, and just doing the work. It doesn't ever feel like a kid's show, and the creative team there, they don't they don't ask them to treat it like a kid's show. They, they ask them to walk in and find the truth in whatever space that is. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really just being able to work with people that, that want to do this, you know? So it, it's not by any means, like, playing down. It's, it's just working with people that happen to be younger, a lot younger than me. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, um, and... Working on Spring Awakening, this is your first time with uh, Spring Awakening? It is, and it's been, you know, a, a, a real departure. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of musical stuff, and this track in particular doesn't have any musical aspect to it, so it was exciting to be able to dive into that. And I also do, you know, a lot more upbeat, uh, yeah. comedic stuff, and this is a far departure from that as well. Yeah, not so much. Any negative choice you could make. That, right. <laughs> that's the way to go. Yeah, I did a couple, I had a oh, three productions of uh, Spring Awakening. Yeah, I'm not a singer, uh, but I love musicals and, you know, and the opportunity to work with, you know, uh, different genres. And so I would leap at them. And the adult men in Spring Awakening is a great is a great opportunity to work on a musical when you don't have to sing. Truly. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Um, so uh, we're on to the current productions. Jocelyn, you are doing the Humans Pulitzer Prize winner oh, yeah. by Stephen Karam up oh. at uh, Homemade Theater, and they're back in the um, art center space yeah yes at the sarno theater the d sarno theater on the corner of congress park Mm -hmm. yeah um and tell us about uh the humans it is a play about a family uh that are uh, they're going to thanksgiving celebrating Thanksgiving dinner at their daughter's new apartment in Chinatown. Yep. Um, and this family is, you could, you, you're going to see that they really, really love each other, but they have a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things. There's some secrets that are going to be um, revealed. There's an eerie aspect to the play. Um, there's just a uh, heartbreak going on. It's just everything that people go through as humans shows up in this play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the eerie aspect. Uh, I don't know uh, how much you want to talk about that, but it's almost a supernatural presence uh, that 
the building has life of some sort. Mm. Yeah? I'm not going to mention anything. <laughs> no spoilers. I cannot spoil this. No way. Have you Just seen The Humans? Nick, Nick and I, I will not. talk about this. You no, know I, I, I know nothing. Yeah, yeah. They, they're, there are things that happen within the building that, um, that make you think that it's almost reacting to what this family is going through. Or, or, yeah, or another character uh, that's commenting on the action or involved in it in some way. My mouth is shut. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on talking. That's all right. Um, yeah, I, it's a fascinating play. Um, it's been here at Proctor's. There was a tour with Richard Thomas, and everyone loved uh, the performance. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great play. Um, question, uh, the D. Sarno Theater, uh, I, I find um, it's challenging in some of its physical aspects. And this play famously works with multi-level set. Yeah. So they devised, um, at that. yeah, that theater, I've, I've worked in that theater before, um, and does not have high ceilings. So uh, they devised kind of a platform to yep. make it seem like we're on, on two levels. And we, as the actors, we really have to make sure that the audience sees that. And I think that we've captured, I think that we've done it. Um, so, yeah. So you're paying attention to the playing space and the areas if uh, you don't have the, um, the second story, yeah, the second story, yeah. Um, so we, yeah, we we play it so that the audience could think that there was a second story. Yep. And and hopefully that will come through. Right. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Uh, you know, if you tell the audience this <laughs> this is what it is, then yeah. you know they'll go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. A challenge for the actors, for sure. But I think we've I think we've done it. Um, challenge for the actors in uh, the physical um, when you're in a scene. Is there something that you're doing uh, to convey, you know, that you're a floor away? Mm -hmm. I guess like if you were talking and you know you told uh, like in acting class, if I told someone, you know, uh, imagine that they're on the other side of the bathroom door, mm -hmm. you know, that you would have to speak in a certain way, mm -hmm. right? Is mm -hmm. that coming across yeah. as far as you're on different floors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, that charges everything that you're doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so uh, you're in a, with a new cast. You said you haven't worked with this cast before mm -hmm. or this director. You mm -hmm. came into audition and it was a young stage manager, young director. Yeah. Here you are cast. Uh, what's it been like working with all these new people? Oh, it's been great. It's <laughs> what a great experience. Erin Harrington is the the director and she's really really a joy to work with she's patient she's got a great sense of humor um she lets us um experiment she just it's it's really nice it's really just a joy the actors are there's some seasoned actors there's a brand new actor actress actor uh that plays my daughter um Bridget, uh, uh, David Skill plays Eric, my husband, and he's a wonder. And we are neighbors. <laughs> he just moved from Pennsylvania in October, and lo and behold, we live a couple of blocks away. So um, it's really going to be great. He is a former um, uh, theater professor. Yeah. So it's, that's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Welcome. Welcome to Capital Region Theater, David. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in the humans. Uh, that's great. And, uh, what a great way to introduce yourself to the community or to, to meet people who go out and yeah. audition for the humans. Uh, we kind of skipped over. We kind of assumed that everyone knew what Spring Awakening is. Oh, um, yeah. So what is Spring Awakening? Well, it, it's, a, it's a very happy tale. No. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> Spring. I, ultimately, I, I think it comes down to a, a cautionary tale. that it, It's set in the late 19th century, but it, it, it's just as relevant today. Um, you know, looking at the exchange of information and, and really the dangers of not talking about hard things because they're hard. You know, without a fully informed conversation about how the world works and about what the consequences could be, uh, and, and particularly conversations between, you know, the older generation and the younger generation coming up and finding their way in the world, um, without knowing what these challenges they're going to face, they don't know what consequences can come from tackling it in different ways. And so you see the dangers um, that that these kids really experience because the older generation, especially at that time, just didn't talk about really important issues. I mean, it, it deals with concepts of, you know, sex, abuse, uh, suicide. There's there's some heavy topics in there. Um, right. Right, um, and there is unwanted pregnancy. There is, uh, um, and but you know, you talk about how it's being relevant and how certain uh, communities are uh, policing uh, the discussion as far as um, gender dysphoria or uh, or even just homosexuality, uh, and that you know, trying to limit. Uh, the conversation going on and uh, in Spring Awakening, uh, and you know, unfortunately, it, it, you know, is still relevant a uh, hundred years later. Sadly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you play all the adult men. I do. Ellen Nine Cribs of them. plays all the adult women. And she's such a delight. She's so incredible. Um, yeah, we hate her because she's just so perfect. <laughs> she's just so perfect. There's, she's just the, the loveliest person and so talented. Yeah, yeah. truly. I, I mean, if Ellen's work was the only thing happening on that stage, it would 100% be worth the ticket. But there's also a lot more happening. Like, there's just such wonderful work top to bottom. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, and, and, the, uh, you're working with the Playhouse Academy. Have we mentioned this? The the no. kids in the Playhouse Academy, which is the education arm of Playhouse Stage, uh, Playhouse Stage, which puts on the summer shows at uh, Park Playhouse, but they also run Coho's Music Hall now, and they have an education arm, which is the Playhouse Academy. And uh, you have 14 to 17-year-olds playing these... Uh, what is it, 13 students in it, or 11 yeah, 13. students? 13 students. Uh, what's that been like? It's It's been wonderful. You know, I, I wasn't sure what to expect coming into it just because I, I hadn't worked with with the teens in particular. Um, I had the opportunity to work with the, the younger kids, like the middle school and upper elementary and best Christmas pageant ever, and, and they were great. Um, but I didn't know what to expect coming in just because I knew the, the subject matter was difficult. Um, but just the talent and professionalism and respect that these kids have walked into the room with has just been wonderful. And a lot of them are aiming, you know, they, they call it a pre-professional program. They're aiming towards performing careers, but not all of them are. And, you know, I, I don't think that you can distinguish who is versus isn't. They're all just coming in with the same kind of professionalism and, and talent and respect. Awesome. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. I, I got to believe that uh, I was talking to um, a young man who I worked with uh, on his 
uh, well, I actually met him doing a production of Spring Awakening. Uh, I think we met uh, doing West Side Story, but with uh, CR Productions, mm. uh, Jim Charles and Tony Rivera, who used to run Coe's Music Hall. I did um, some things there with them. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was asking him about his experience. He went on to Wagner uh, and majored in musical theater and what it was like coming from the Capital Region and, you know, how he felt uh, prepared for school and this uh, Josh Romeo, he did 50 shows in the Capital Region before he went to school. Wow. You know, so, I mean, you know, to ask him, you know, how did you feel it prepared you? It's like, you know, he had it down. Like, you know, he had a solid, solid background, you know, in uh, education, information, uh, experience, uh, you know, and working with hundreds of people you yeah. know it's got to be you know uh, these kids that are working with professionals like you and uh ashley simone kirchner who's the choreographer chuck Krauss, who's the director brandon jones your music director all have 10 to 20 years experience in the business yeah. and we had yvonne perry as the intimacy director on the show too which helped really approach I some of those difficult that. moments it i is saw wonderful. that i saw that I have never worked with an intimacy coordinator. Have you, Jocelyn? No, I haven't. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's such important work. Like, I, I've, I've seen it become more prevalent, like, these last few years. Yeah. But, you know, dealing with intimacy on stage, it, it needs to be, like, choreography where everything is scripted down to the moment to make it clear that, you know, these two characters are in these moments on stage, but it, it's not going beyond any kind of lines of the four walls Right. Of, of the play. And it, it helps make performers feel so much safer. It's right. highly, highly recommend. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, just as you would have, uh, you know, a script, you know, I, I'm going to say the lines on the page and I'm not going beyond this. It, it's like, you know, I have, uh, you know, is it OK if I put my hands on your shoulders you know, rather than your torso, right? you know, and, and just setting all that up as far as, you know, what we're dealing with. And uh, I read an article in Times recently about a woman who was doing the intimacy uh, coordination, and it just made it so, uh, like, you know, simple as far as, you know, what it is that they're uh, dealing with that, uh, you know, it's like, oh, that, that makes perfect sense. You know, I had um, uh, an acting class last week, and I had a brand new student, um, and we were doing it, not an improv. It, it had a small scripted exercise, uh, but uh, you know, she felt like, you know, at the end of the scene, she had this exuberance about it, and she said, you know, I felt like going to hug him, but I didn't know if I should, and I was like. Excellent. <laughs> right. Excellent. You know, great that you had that instinct that we're talking about it, that you bring it up, you know, but, you know, also that we haven't discussed it beforehand, which you want to do with your scene partner. Yeah, right? absolutely. And that goes just back into making everyone feel safe because, you know, if let's say the actor on the other side of that had no idea, it could completely throw off all of the work that they were doing in terms of, okay, now this person's hugging me. And, you know, to a certain extent, it's like that is what we do. We're reacting to what's happening. But when it comes to, like, your physical safety and whether you're comfortable, right. you know, I, I think that the rehearsal room is a great place to play with that and be able to stop and say, okay, here's what I'd like to do. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Um, and it, it just helps add an extra layer to yeah. the work, I think. Yeah. How great um, that the kids have this experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Yvonne is a uh, theater. Uh, she's done, I don't know, 10 main stage productions at uh, Capitol Repertory Theater. Uh, but she's also taught for many years at UAlbany. So, yeah, kudos. Great. And you guys open tonight? We do. Tonight. Excited. Uh, yeah. It, it, we finished our, our final dress last night and. You know, we got all of the, the lights, the costumes, the haze going on, so the lights look just incredible. And it, it was those layers that were added on to the work that, 
you know, I was able to observe in the rehearsal room that it's like, oh, we have we have a really good show on our hands. It just I'm I can't wait. Great. Great. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Did you have any audience last night? Uh, we had a few people. Uh, Ashley teaches at UAlbany. Yep. And I think a few of her students came in. And we also had like some of the design team that came in and won't be there for the actual running of the show yep. during the run. But, you know, they were experiencing the whole thing for the first time, too. And Great. Yeah. Yeah. What fun. Um, so you went to Russell Sage. Uh, Jocelyn, where did you go to school? Did you major in theater? I did not. I, I took a drama class in college, and I fell in love with it. And I was like, whoa, this is awesome, and I want to do this a lot, a lot. And, you know, it's um, kind of a sad story <laughs> because, um, you know, my mom uh, did not approve of acting. She had a really not a not a good thing about it and so i being the good latino daughter <laughs> listened to my mom for many many years so i you know her generation and she came you know she you know came for, to america and to give us a better life and you know she worked and worked her butt off and she really didn't see acting as something that you can um, live off. And, you know, you need to work. Yeah. You know, what are you talking to me about acting? Yeah. You know, you need to work. So I listened, and I worked, 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 hated it, was never happy with anything that I did um, until I found photography. And I then ran my own photography business for, like, 12 years, and that kind of... Um, uh, it made me happy artistically, you know, but there was so, oh, something always missing. There was something always missing in my life, and it was acting. And I went back to it. Um, I took a class um, in, with Patricia Snyder, and um, they casted me in all a bunch of stuff. Um, and then I said, this is, I'm going to do this. When Pat was teaching at U Albany? No, when Pat uh, she she taught. I was um, gonna say you're not that Sarato old. No, <laughs> no, in Saratoga, and it was just uh, you know a six eight week class, and um, when the um, when that theater, uh, the small theater um, in the dance museum, which yeah. is closed now, but yep. uh, yeah, with them. So okay, yeah. yeah, I didn't know she did that. Yeah, that's About 15 years ago, I want to say. Maybe not. Maybe less than that. Yeah. Okay. Ago. That's fantastic. Um, and then uh, you've been working in the community since. Uh, this is your first time with Homemade, but I've seen you uh, at Black Theater Troupe. And who else have you worked with? Uh, with the Bunbury Players. I've yeah. I've worked for them. Uh, I worked with them for the first time. Fun group. <laughs> really fun. Um, young young guys too. Young, um, just they love the theater. Yeah, it, it's just it was really fun to work with them. Uh, who else? Um, I theater with Patricia Snyder's yep. uh, group, uh, Black Theater Troupe. I think that might be. I can't remember. Okay, <laughs> a nope. few commercials here and there, um, and um, just fun stuff. And where did you go to school? I went to school, uh, it was a small private school, Mercy College. Mercy. Yeah, I actually, um, uh, it was, uh, I was a psychology <laughs> major, <laughs> um, which is, you know, yeah, far from art. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think psychology is incredibly helpful for acting. It is, it is. Get it inside is. the head, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it definitely makes me think about, you know. Explore the psyche and, mm -hmm. yeah, what makes you tick and what makes the character tick and how do they line up. Uh, yeah. Uh, great. Uh, where is Mercy? It's in, uh, they have several different Okay. Things, uh, schools. Uh, they have one in New York, Manhattan, uh, one in Westchester. Yeah, they're different, different annexes, I guess you call them. 
It's, it's really a small private school. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, and Nick, you went to Sage, um, uh, Sage and Troy? Yeah, yeah. Before, when, when I went there, it was still broken up into Sage College of Albany and Russell right. Sage College and the Sage Graduate School. I know they're under one banner now, but I was on the Troy campus as part of the Male Actors Apprenticeship Program. Yeah, and that was uh, like uh, after Brian Sheldon or? Yes, I came in the year after Brian graduated. I got to work with him a couple times when I was a senior in high school and like his cohort um, and they're just wonderful. Yeah. What were you in at uh, uh, Sage? Uh, the first thing that I was in was Peter Pan when they did it yep. in the little theater. Uh, I also did it in the big theater because I was in school at that point. Yep. Um, but uh, I did Susical there, uh, Songs for a New World the first time they did it, uh, Peter Pan, uh, War of the Worlds, Willy Wonka, Drood. Uh, okay. Yeah. Bunch okay. of things. Yeah. 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 Uh, I saw the Drood. I saw most of those, actually. <laughs> I saw. The, I was there. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, the Willy Wonka. Uh, what's his name? Who played Charlie? Oh, Jack Rento. Jack Rento. Yeah, Jack Rento. Uh, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He was terrific. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, so, uh, last night I went to, um, Sand Lake Center for the Arts in April Park, uh, which Brian Sheldon is managing director of, or I, I always get his title wrong. And he, executive director? Yeah, okay. I think, I think there's executive Thanks. in it. He, he's, Thanks, Nick. He's very important, Brian. Yes, he's very important. <laughs> he's the managing executive artistic director. <laughs> Hopefully, in charge. Hopefully, I won't hear from him on that. <laughs> but uh, the play was Little Wars uh, by Stephen Carl McCaslin, and it's set during World War II at Gertrude Stein and Alice B. Tokolis's house. And coming for drinks is Lillian Helman, Hel Hellman, Lillian Hellman, uh, Agatha Christie, Dorothy Parker, and. Um, so it had a cast of, I think, seven women. I wanted to audition for that. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, but you were already cast. Already cast, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got seven women, and it's directed by two women, Val Cavanaugh and Sue Frost, so that was great. Um, but these women are driving from... <laughs> I, 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 was saying, I was joking that this place should be sponsored by Sunoco, because they've there's... They're coming from like New Lebanon wow. to uh, Hudson Falls, Hoosick Falls. Oh, wow. Like everyone in the cast. I think Brooke uh, might live uh, in town, but everyone else was like coming from. Just converging on West Sand Lake. Yes, <laughs> yes. Which I find very exciting and odd. And, you know, it is like um, when people say, you know, um, uh, oh, that's a hike, you know, to get somewhere. And I'm like, when you look at what the performers are doing or, you know, and when we, uh, when you lived in New York, you know, you wouldn't think about, like, if you lived in Queens going to a show in mm -hmm. Brooklyn, you know, which could be an hour on the train. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and I'm like, I don't know. You know, I, I guess if it's worthwhile, you know, it's all dependent on, uh, you know, in the opportunities presented, you know, uh, this play about seven women, uh, Capital Region premiere. Uh, it, it's a very uh, smart, funny, um, morally serious play, deals with um, anti-Semitism, deals with, you know, um, all, all, Many of the things, um, you know, how to be an artist uh, and committed artist in, uh, you know, making your statement in a world, you know, uh, riven by uh, polarizing factors and, you know, very relevant to the day. So there, are, there's so much worthwhile going on in this play. It's like, why wouldn't? you drive an extra 15 minutes, you know, but 
there there is my statement <laughs> on little wars um but yeah uh i i find the capital region uh interesting in that way too because you know uh i was asking jocelyn beforehand because you know i know i've seen her you know at auditions and at performances throughout the capital region um but it doesn't really you know uh I don't think those silos exist anymore. You know, um, last weekend we ran into each other at Fort Salem Theater, and the place was packed. Oh yeah, with performers, uh, Capital Region uh, performers from Schenectady, Avril Park, Albany, Troy. You know, and it's just like cast a wide net sure yeah and that is a haul yeah you know but it's worthwhile it is worthwhile especially for that show <laughs> yeah right what'd you think of that show oh i thought it was wonderful you know it, in, into the woods is my favorite show ever i've done it three times and you know it, it was just such a representative production of it they, they truly did it justice it's it's one of the best books in musical theater canon in, in my opinion um, and, you know, they just had such good performances that were so faithful to it that, you know, it, I think it was like an hour and nine minutes for me and I, I do it again. You know, <laughs> it was yeah. so good. Yeah. Excellent. I, I agree. I concur. Uh, and it was wonderful to see many, uh, people who I have not seen, uh, many people who I've seen regularly in the capital region, uh, Elizabeth Sherwood Mack. Kelly Sankowitz, um, uh, names are escaping me, <laughs> but then also uh, new, um, I, I think I've seen, what's his name, Kevin Miner, uh, once before, who played the wolf, and mm. um, uh, Cinderella's, Cinderella's Prince, Prince. Um, and the guy playing Jack, I thought was fantastic. Oh yeah, I worked with him um, uh Diary Van Frank, he's great. Yeah, he had a small part, but he was really committed to the part. He was a, a, a soldier, a Nazi soldier. <laughs> really, but he's such a good kid. Like, he's right. right. Jack yeah. played Jack. Yeah, he's yeah. just really, really. Great. Yeah. yeah, I see him. He's gonna go far. You were in Fort Salem. You did that, and you did um, Steel Magnolias. Steel, yeah. How far is that from Saratoga? It's an hour. Yeah, it's an hour. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you think that it's <laughs> it's an hour, and it's like you know windy roads sure. and then foggy and deer running across your car. Yeah. It's <laughs> but it's got a good podcast. It was worth it. It was worth it. That's I, right. I, I love them at Fort Salem. I love them. They oh, just love them. I'm gonna see what I'm auditioning for there. I was wowed by that soon. space. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> You're full of secrets. <laughs> yeah, first time there. Yeah. And that, that theater space was just mm -hmm. beautiful. Isn't that I, I crazy? Was wowed. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, got those seats from like an old theater in New York. Right. Yeah. 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 It's Chris and I had front row on the on the right side. So, you know, the leg room. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, we saw um, coming out of the pandemic, I think, 21 they did marvelous wonderettes mm. which i don't ever need to see again but uh but a good starter show iris rogers who played cinderella yeah. was in it courtney harrington mm. who played the baker's wife oh, was yeah. in it you know into like here we are three years later and it's like you know everything's coming to fruition and it's got you know crazy uh crowds you know, lining up to Fort Salem. Yeah. You know, and that came out of the pandemic. You know, those guys. I called. Uh, <laughs> Kyle and Jared I West. Call, those I guys. called Kyle and because um, I wanted to see Agnes of God and I'm, I, it was sold out. And yeah. I'm like, can you get me in somehow, please? I have to go see this. And um, and he was like, of course, just come. I'm like, Ay! and that's what we ran into each other. Right, Patrick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I bought <laughs> I bought the last ticket. And I said, I have one. 
<laughs> can I get another? Up, you know? yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, but they're so oh. great. They're just, you really need to audition with them. Yeah. You really need to work with them because they are the best. They really are amazing people. Hey, I, I got a Prius. I'll drive all over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, what else is going on theater-wise? Jocelyn, you have your dance card. You're like, oh, I'm auditioning for this. Love I'm working you. with yeah, that. You know, yeah. What are you looking forward to in the summer? Oh, well, the summer, I'm looking forward to the, you know, the one-act jamboree with yep. the Black Theater Troupe. That, that's going to run from June 6th to June 16th. June 8th and 9th is for the young for the young kids, and um, that's where they're going to perform. And then the rest of the days are the one acts older, um, you know, for not older, but for adults. mature, <laughs> mature. Um, and I like the notes. <laughs> yeah, I have to have notes. No, no, no. I am like I have to. And then um, also in June. I am part, I'm on the creative board of Our Lodge Foundation. It's a non-for-profit that we're, we are trying to save um, the um, only, probably, uh, Black Elks Lodge in Saratoga. Mm. It's been around since the 1800s. It's got a long history um, in the Saratoga, um, in, Sar in the city of Saratoga. So... Um, I'm on that board, um, the creative uh, board, and we are in charge of doing Juneteenth celebration. This is going to be our third year um, doing it. The first year was at the lodge itself, but we've grown, and everyone just kind of invites us to, the, to use their space. Um, last year, we had it at the Universalist um, Unitarian Church. We had a capacity of 100, standing room only. So we were like, oh boy, we're going to have to go bigger. So um, the Saratoga Y invited us to use their space, their outdoor space. And every, every year we try to get like a theme and teach people something about um, Juneteenth and its history. And um, this year we're, gonna, we're, we're talking about that there is a Juneteenth park um, where um, African Americans pulled their money together to open up this park, and so it's great because we're gonna we're gonna use the outdoor space, so it's going to be kind of like we're in the park, um, Juneteenth Park. So um, that is going to be on Wednesday, the nineteenth, from one to uh, one through 3 p.m. <laughs> and there's going to be poets, community leaders, performers. There's going to be people doing monologues. There's going to be singers. Um, it's just a really fun, fun day. Um, and it's at the Saratoga Springs YMCA, 290 West Ave. Um, <laughs> I'm plugging things. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so I think that's it. So are you producing this? Or? Yeah, yeah. So it's um, four of us um, uh, in the creative board. It's Leslie Dana, um, King Waif uh, Kim Wafer, uh. Uh, Don Hyman, and myself. Very good. And we produce source um, uh, local and far and wide um, uh, actors and just people that want to share, um, you know, their love of black culture and stuff. So it's really cool. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Looking forward to that. What do you got lined up? Uh, the next thing for me is Legally Blonde with Playhouse Stage over I the was summer. Gonna say. Yeah, so I'll be doing that, and I I think that we're open. I don't I don't have notes, so I don't, don't quote me on it. Uh, but I think we're showing open. you up. No, yeah, truly. Could, I could, no, I will forget everything. <laughs> I think we're open uh, July 18th through August 11th at the Coho's Music Hall, uh, and. Con contrary to your assertion, Patrick, I'm excited to see Marvelous Wonderettes there too. I'm not involved oh, with oh, it, but oh. <laughs> sorry, Owen. Um, but yeah, they're doing that, and you know, selfishly, I'm I'm excited to see uh, Finding Nemo Kids done by the Playhouse Stage Academy because it will be my five year old's first show. Oh, so I'm I'm thrilled to see. That. I I've been listening to Legally or not Legally Blonde, uh, Finding Nemo the musical. Several times a day for the last couple months since we signed her up for it, so it's been flowing through through my house uh, delightfully. I'm 
I'm excited to catch some other things because uh, May I don't have anything going on besides you know like day work stuff. Yeah. Um, so in so uh, May and early June, I'm really excited to see, see the squirrels. Uh, yes. by Harbinger at yes. Sand Lake Center for the Arts. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on, and it, it's it's a really wonderful thing that even when I'm not busy doing theater, there's still just a plethora of, of wonderful. Yeah, and um, you move. Uh, you did something rotten in the park last summer. Yes. But Legally Blonde is going to be in the music hall. Yes, Legally Blonde is. Um, Wonder Rats is still in Washington Park. Hey. But I, from my understanding, you know, the, the weather was just brutal last year. Like the wildfires, the, the amount of rain that we had, um, it just, it, it was, it, it was tough. Um, so they wanted to be able to have an offering where, you know, weather be damned, we're going to be putting on the show. Right. Um, and, but they still wanted to be true to, you know, their, their mission of providing free and accessible theater to the capital region. So I, I don't have the exact number, but I think they're planning to offer like between 150 and 200 uh, free seats to each show of Legally Blonde. Awesome. Um, which is, you know, fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Um, I had not heard of this uh, before uh, Owen announced it as far as, um, you know, the weather circumstances uh, changing so much uh, that it's affecting, you know, uh, arts programming that happens during the summer. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, in this, uh, you know, attempt, uh, well, this uh, plan uh, for this summer, I think, is really like, you know, one of the first in the country that I've heard of. I, I mean, I know other organizations have dealt with it, um, Oregon Shakespeare had, uh, you know, a number of uh, canceled, everyone's had canceled events, but, yeah. you know, how to respond to this. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it works out. I wish you all the best. I, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how did you enjoy working in the park? Was it? It was crazy in, in the best way. It was my first time doing any kind of outdoor theater and, you know, it, it was hot. Um, (laughs) especially with something rotten, which is, you know, pretty dance heavy. Um, but it it was wonderful. And especially once we got into like the last week, um, the houses were just packed every day. We had people overflowing beyond the amphitheater, like onto the sides and lawn chairs and, you know, just that space and people being able to just walk by, see, Oh, you know, that, that's something really cool going on. Let me see what it's about. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Great. Um, I imagine that, you know, that uh, you've never paid more attention to the weather. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. Checking on, on, on the hourly, you know, even when we didn't cancel the show, I, I, there were a couple performances that we just fully canceled because of the downpours. There was one that we had to call off at intermission, but, you know, we had some sprinkles even on, on days that we just kept it going and yeah, you know we were we were always hyper aware of where the storms were going. They have like radars going, seeing sure. you know we can see thunder clouds like you know twenty miles away, but it's like it's not going to pass over. We're going to keep going. <laughs> so it was wow, yeah, yeah. exciting. Yeah, uh, you know, are we on today? Right. <laughs> it's almost like you have to have a weatherman on on call. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So just 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 sit there and watch the radar. Our, our weathermen were Owen Smith and Dennis Strange, the technical director. Yeah. They were just constantly aware of it. Yeah, we had a show um, we just finished doing In the Blood at uh, uh, St. Rose, and the last snowstorm of the year happened uh, on a Saturday night, and um, many places uh, canceled, and we did not. Um, and it turned out all right. Um, there were a bunch of U Albany students, uh, so there were buses used, and uh, you know everyone got home safely. Um, but you know you start to watch other organizations closing, or you know, are we going? Or and I think there was a show. There was a show at Proctor's that night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I I know that there was something at the music hall too, and they were. 
they were like debating whether to close, but then like Proctor stayed open, Cap Rep stayed open, and it was like, all right, we'll we'll do that too. Yeah, good. Yeah, I like I like having you know someone else behind you, so yes. like you're not the only one. Right. Yeah, that's good. Um, so uh, we are at the point in the show for the play that changed my life, Jocelyn. Oh. I was play that changed your life. You can choose one and come back and tell us the next one. It changes all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because you grow, you, you know, you, um, well, I really feel that the play that changed my life was Knock Me a Kiss. It really did. And it's recent, but it taught me a lot of stuff about this craft. Um, and I and I was so I was so lucky to pl- to work with Barbara Howard. That's she says seasoned, and it was her first directorial debut. I mean, it was the first time she's ever directed. But I love the way she directs, love it. And um, I just it just made me fall in love all o- all over again with you know I like I felt like that girl in drama class. And that I was like, this is what I want to do, and I just want to do it all the time, <laughs> kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, it just made me dedicated. It made me f- more focused. It uh, just, I don't want to do anything else, you know? So I, that's what, and and it was like, not only because of the writing, but the characters were, were very, they were all real people, Yeah. you know? Um, and especially Nina, she never had a voice. She was always in the shadow of her husband, of W.E.B. Du Bois, you know. And and so I just wanted to give her a voice. And I wanted, and I and I was, and I, I just wanted to like show people how strong she really was. Although she was just so, oh, she had so much pain inside. But I just wanted to show people that she was somebody too, someone really special. And without her. He wouldn't have even been who he really was because she did everything for him. Sure. You know? So, yeah. yeah. Who's the playwright on that? Um, oh, my God. Ugh. Sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We'll, I forgot. We'll add it in the notes. Please. Uh, <laughs> I should have wrote it on my notes. Yeah. <laughs> you had everything else going. Everything Didn't else. Didn't know you'd you go got back me. two years. <laughs> yes, that's my job. <laughs> Excellent. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, Nick? Are, are musicals allowed? Sure. Fantastic. It, then I, I'd, I'd go to Into the Woods. You know, oh. like I said, I've, I've done it a few times, and every time that I've done it, I've been at a slightly different point in my life, and it's just always landed differently. And there's just so much substance there that the further that you, you delve in, the further that you know, it, it really reveals about yourself and humanity, and yeah. So it, yeah. it I, I, I could do that show forever. Wow, that's something. Yeah. What was your first experience with it? It was actually in high school, um, yeah. and I played Jack. And then the next year, I did it uh, with CR Kids, and I played the Baker. And then a few years later, I was out in Falmouth, Massachusetts with the College Light Opera Company um, doing one week stock out there. And the last show of my second summer was uh, Into the Woods and I got to play the Baker again. And even just, you know, those few years in between, having gone through some years of college, having gone on my first tour, like it, it really just landed so differently. And, you know, I, I am thrilled at the, the prospect of doing that show again. Um, always keeping my eyes out for it, but isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I have not done. Uh, I've only done two plays more than once: um, uh, Bedroom Farce and um, Arrowtown. In mm-hmm. Arrowtown, I played two different characters. I played the stage manager the first time, and Editor Webb the second time, and it, it was like it was a different play. Like mm-hmm. I had, you know not experienced it before uh five years Mm. yeah not you know not an extraordinary amount of time but yeah and and uh we're different and Mm -hmm. i would do it again yeah yeah absolutely um 
But yeah, I would do it again. And and the way in which I thought about our town, you know, beforehand, like having seen it or something like that, um, you know, changed, you know, a lot. Yeah. But um, I saw Into the Woods with Bernadette Peters. Did I tell you this last week? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. part did she play in that? The witch. <gasps> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, That's the original production. Yeah, yeah, the original production. Uh, it's out there on tape. Yeah, the PBS. PBS did a live capture, do they call it? Yeah, I've been listening to the podcast that you, you shared with me last week, Giants in the Sky, that talks about that whole process. And I've listened to the James Lapine and Chip Zion interviews about it. And there's just so much there underneath that I, I have so much love for that show that it's it's just wonderful being able to dive you know under the covers, so to speak. Oh, I'm glad I was able to share that yeah, with you. you. Yeah, no problem. So podcast to Fort Salem, you're all covered now. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, excellent. And hopefully this podcast is helping someone on a drive to their theater destination, uh, doing something very worthwhile. Uh, thank you, Nick. Jocelyn, you want to give uh, one more shout out? To your projects, The Humans at Homemade Theater by Stephen Karam. Uh, it opens next Friday? 19th, yeah. There's a free preview on the 18th. Um, uh, I yeah. didn't know Homemade was doing that. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so the 19th to the 28th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and two shows on Sunday, 2 p.m. and 7.30. Two shows oh, on Sunday? Oh, my gosh. Am I... Uh-oh, I think I wrote my notes wrong. <laughs> Check the notes. That, that'd be awesome. Saturday. I, uh, Sorry. A Sunday night performance. My, I, my ears were perked. I was yeah. Like, I don't have yeah. anything going on Sunday night. Sunday oh night. Oh, my God. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> notes will fail you. <laughs> when you do them wrong, yeah. yeah that's why will. I chose to not bring them. I didn't uh, trust my own right. hand. Yes. Of course, I did it this morning, so I should have done that, you know. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah. So the 19th through the, the 28th. 28th. Yeah. Excellent. Just go on homemadetheater.org. <laughs> <laughs> Do not They've listen to me. They've got all. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And Nick, you are opening Spring Awakening tonight. Yes, indeed. At Cahoe's Music Hall. Tonight through the 28th, uh, Thursday through Sunday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at 7.30, and Saturday and Sunday at 2.00. Excellent. No Sunday night, 7.30. Not to my knowledge. I'll, I'll yeah. check the notes. <laughs> okay, he's never going li- to <laughs> let me live that down. No. Never. <laughs> no, I, uh, do you know Eunice Feria? Yeah. Yeah, I was at uh, Skidmore. Uh, they they had a Sunday night show last week of Mick Bitches. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Sunday night at 7 o'clock. And it was one of the student-directed Studio Lab shows. And I'm like, I'm digging this Sunday night. Yeah. And... Um, you know, when that Rebecca Lobo c- comment came out of good luck finding anything to oh. do in Albany. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on a Monday afternoon, I'm like, we have to have Monday matinees. You know, like yeah. I, I could sell a Monday matinee. Yeah. Oh. You know, <laughs> these are all things that run through my mind. <laughs> we, need, we need a wall-to-wall well, theater. You could get it done. I know yes. you can. Well, don't they have a... a- uh, Sand Lake, they have like the matinee players. Yeah, matinee players. Uh, they actually do. Uh, they, their short and sweet program was on a Tuesday afternoon. You are correct. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, yeah, we could do a Monday afternoon show. I'm sure down in the villages or, you know, in one of the senior communities, they have Monday matinees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, matinees, uh, you know, very important to the theater, you know, because of the aging audience, and you know, a lot of people don't want to drive in the dark. But yeah, 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 and no rest. Uh, so uh, break legs. Thank, Thank you, both of you. Have fun. Have a great weekend. Can't wait to see both of your shows. This has been a, an awesome uh, conversation. Thank you for. Uh, bringing more theater into my life and uh, I'll catch everyone in the theater soon. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.